Welcome, everybody. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot, where we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. And today we've got a special show. We are talking with top tier management of the company Vetcom, ticker CEOS on the OTC Pink. Vetcom is a veterans education and benefits company, primarily assisting veterans to get their full service related disability benefits from the government. Doesn't sound too hard, does it? But would you believe there are currently more than 11 million vets not receiving their full financial benefits for their service to America, resulting in literally billions of dollars every month not getting to those who deserve it. The government's keeping it. Sounds criminal to me, folks. And to give us more information on the company and what they're doing, I am honored and excited to have with us the CEO of Vetcom, who herself is a U.S. Marine Corps veteran. She is also the author of several books, including the most recent one from 2023, The Race to Save America, and she has been broadcasted on the news more than 60 times, probably more than Biden. <laughs> and on top of that, she is currently running for Congress in the 49th District of California and is the only veteran running in that district. So let's give a big hearty welcome to our special guest, Kate Monroe. Hello, Kate. How are you today? I'm so good. So excited. So are we. We are definitely wanting to have you here. There's been a lot of comments on Twitter waiting for this interview. Now, I got to tell you, I was not familiar with CEOS until a short time ago. And when I started doing my research, I got to be honest, the research started tugging on my heartstrings. And that's unusual. My heart does not get involved into my investments. However, when I seen what this company was doing, I could not ignore it. It's one thing for a company to be doing good business. It's another thing for a company to be doing good. And helping our American vets get justly what they deserve, that's good business. That's honorable business. So as I said, I'm excited to have you here today, Kate. Now, before we jump into what Betcom is all about, I really want to focus in on the woman on the front line. I want to talk about you, Kate. You're making the difference here. Thank you. So can you give us a little bit of information about who you are, what you do, and how you got involved with Vetcom in the first place? Yeah, I, um, I as, a, as you said, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I grew up in a really teeny tiny town to two amazing parents, but you know, neither of them were college educated. I ended up uh, getting you know 4.0 out of high school. I went on to go to college. And in college, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to be. Like a lot of people, you know, they don't know exactly what they want to be yet. And so I decided after a first year of college to come home and go into the military. And through a crazy set of circumstances, I ended up in the Marine Corps. And <laughs> in the Marines, I, you know, got assaulted. I smashed my face in eye socket, lacerated my whole face, actually almost crushed the center of my face. Um, crushed wow. the bursa sac in my elbow, broke my right ankle, broke two ribs. And now all these years later, I'm rated at a hundred percent, you know, disability, but I didn't get to finish my service because I got so injured. And so I always felt like there was this gap, like I didn't ever get closure on my service. Okay. And, you know, after, after service, I got into mainly into sales and leadership and speaking, you know, I was in the auto industry. Um, I also was in the timeshare industry. I coached about 300 real estate agents over the last three years. I'm, I'm speaking is, is my thing. And about three or four years ago, I decided to open my own car dealership. So, you know, a long, long time ago, when I was in my mid twenties, I started selling cars. And then later I ended up being a dealer principal. And that's very rare for a woman to be a, you know, dealer owner with no family background in the car business. Mm -hmm. Well, on my building, I was in Oceanside, California. That's very, very veteran dense, very veteran dense city. I put veteran owned and operated on a 50 foot banner. Uh -huh. As you can imagine, I got a lot of veteran business coming to my store and I would try to put a deal together and I would say, hey, do you have any uh, VA disability income for the car deal? And they would look at me like they've never even heard of VA disability. So I said, why don't I help you get your funds so that I can put this car deal together and then 90 days come back and see me? Well, I did this about 200 times <laughs> and I just thought, is anybody rated for disability like in the whole country? So I put a team of people together, experts, and we started to research the issue and found, you know, that figure that you gave of 
10 to uh, 11 million veterans not mm -hmm. collecting their disability or the totality of their disability. And I had to ask myself, why is that? If it's available, why aren't people collecting it? And it turns out it's a very adversarial situation when you're going to war with the VA. And I hate to call it war, but it is because they're trying right. not to pay you. And that's what made me develop VETCOM to try to uh, take the hassle off of the plate of veterans and give them surety that they would be rated, which is why we offer a guarantee. So I think that's what led me to do um, all this work for veterans. And then once you start you know, down the veteran path, people start bringing you things like all the stuff going on with the migrants in the VA, you know, all the homeless veteran issues. And right. I can just turn a blind eye to it. I'm one of those people I have to go get involved and, and help. So, you know, that's how, that's what led us to today. But, um, you know, only, you know, three years ago, I started this company with one of, you know, who's now one of my best friends. And now we have 35 uh, employees in, in May of this year, we only had five. And now I have 35. So that should give you some idea of the amount of growth we've had uh, in sales and claims over the last year. So excited. Now, Vetcom just came into its psyche now. It's not C-Course, right? Psyche. Um, well, at, at one point, C-Course had just Psyche. And now C-Course has Psyche and Vetcom. So, Which name does the company prefer to use? Um, I mean... It, it's not going to be very long before it will be called Vetcom. So ah. we're, we're, we're in the Vetcom season. Right. You know, we're, things are happening um, very quickly. So we prefer to call it Vetcom. <laughs> the symbol right now still is CEOS. As, and I think that, you know, it will probably remain. But Vetcom is the flagship company that Seacourse has. Now, how long has Vetcom been active? Vetcom has been active as a company for three years. Um, but we had, we weren't selling that whole time. We were developing all of our courses and our systems right. and training a, a group of, of people and sort of navigating, how do we reach veterans? Cause that was the hard part. It's like, we know we can do this very cool service, mm -hmm. but how do we get in front of vet, you know, veterans? And that took us a little while, but now that we cracked the code on how to get in front of veterans, I mean, we are, You've seen what, you know, all of our quarterlies come out. We've been, you know, doubling. I think when the quarterlies right. come out, I think people are going to go, oh, wow, you guys had a really busy last quarter. Um, and, you know, and our, in, in fact, you know, January shaping up to be as big as, you know, half of the last quarter by itself. So, you know, we're, we're picking up speed. We're, we're really doing some things over here. Now, since we are talking about your finances, we had a viewer ask me a question they were looking at your financials and you are doing well on your revenues. You're growing quick. They're small numbers, but you're growing quick. And that's what you're looking for. He wanted to know about your expenditures compared to your revenues. Yeah. And basically I've always got this opinion that, and I do, I say this, you know, as lightly as I can startup companies who are yeah. just getting into gear. There's normally a lot of expenses compared to the revenues and it looks a little top side, but you say there's more to the picture than what we see. Yes. Can you explain that to the investors? Yes. So the way in which, so all of last year, we were basically selling one product, but we were selling it two ways. You could either pay for that product $9.97 one time or 12 payments of 97 mm -hmm. Well, in the accounting for the public company, the 97s, even, you know, even though we sold the whole product, they're only counting the $97 as it's realized as it goes along. Right. And two, because we used to have a year long um, guarantee, they were, they were taking the, the 997 and also parsing it into monthly payments. So the revenue that got reported was in some cases only a 12th of the actual revenue we brought in. Right. Right. So everybody's like, how do you have all these employees? It's like, <laughs> well, we're, you know, this month to give you an idea, we're pacing anywhere from, you know, 250,000 to 275,000 in revenue just this month. Just this month. Just this month. Wow. You know, we closed out last quarter at just under, you know, half a million or so in revs. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot more to it than it appears, but you know, you have to public company accounting isn't the same as, as general accounting, you know, in other spaces. So you just have to realize we're only getting to report that incremental revenue. 
So the gotcha. other thing we did is we changed our pricing model uh, at the end of October. There is no 97 plan anymore. So now because there's the 997 or, you know, three payments of 400 or six payments of 250, 95% of our customers just pay the 997. So we're sure. realizing almost all of our revenue inside of every month. And so that is, we have a very large sales team now and the scheduling team and people that manage our chat. I mean, we get hundreds of chat messages a day. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's exciting. So you've got a lot of different things that your company is actually doing. We are talking about helping the vets get their benefits, that paycheck of $1,000 to $3,000 a month, Correct. every month for the rest of their lives. Tax I mean, that's, yeah. that's life changing. Oh that's weekly, monthly, yearly, the rest of your life. That is going to change your life. And they have a right to it. Correct. But there's more that they have a right to as well. A lot of these vets come out with mental health issues. A lot of them have a hard time with transition when they come out of the military and they end up being homeless. Yes. So your company isn't just helping them get benefits. You're helping them across the spectrum of needs, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a couple of big ways in which I think, you know, leading into this next year, you might've seen the press we did on our um, skill bridge program. So yes. we're, one, we're one of only 4,000 companies that was approved to be a skill bridge company. And our thought was one, it's good for the company because we get to bring on personnel that we don't pay for, for six months while they ramp up, they cost us nothing. So we get to scale and grow faster. But what it does for them is the second they do train, transition out of military life, they have a salary, they're ready to go. And there isn't that time where they could end up homeless because they run out of money. That's one thing. Then what you just put up here, um, I'm the executive director of How's the Heroes. That's a charity that we formed that mm -hmm. we that get supported by Vetcom. So, you know, some of the money that we bring in, we support um, veterans that are homeless, that are in transitionary housing, and we put on big functions and we take all of them and make all these you know, men sitting here. We put them through um, all their claims that day and prepared them to go and fight the VA. And half the people in that room are now collecting $4,000 a month and are not homeless and are some of our biggest referrers. The, the gentleman in the red shirt up there, we got him to 100, his whole family to 100. And he sent us about 19 of his friends. Whoa. So it's, you know, it's really something that we do. And you can't care about veterans, but only care about helping them get money. They need health care. They need shelter. They need, you know, their mental health worked on. And so we try to offer all we possibly can as a company, all of our humanity um, to this segment of the market. You have a app for the mental health and reaching out to them for uh, things like that. What, what is the name of your app? You mean the app that existed before, before Vetcom? Oh, is it gone? No, it's just not something that we have necessarily utilized yet as a company. We, okay. are, we are, though, in the process, and you're the first to hear this, but we are in the process of developing an app that is going to be um, sold in the app, you know, app store for both Apple and Android. And it will um, allow them to refer people to chat with us to schedule to have all their courses, all their FAQs. Uh, it'll be basically everything they need. Um, to be able to function all the hours that we're not open as a company because veterans want to talk to you all day. Like they want to talk to us 24 hours a day and it's taking, we had to get a huge customer service staff to support that. And so hopefully this app will help them get the answers they need in a timely manner. Yes. But also for them to share the word and it is going to become a new product that we sell that won't take. So if somebody were to just buy the app, we're going to sell it for $99, a do it yourself version. Mm -hmm. And that should bring us in a ton of revenue, but not have a lot of overhead because we won't be supporting the, you know, any of that chat for people who actually are not gold members in Vetcom. So it should give us a big lift in revenue and opportunities to get more veterans into our full program. Now, you mentioned there that you have people referring other vets to you. I heard you actually have a referral program. Can you explain yeah. that to us? Yeah, our refer referral program is actually um, turns out to be about 50% of our business. Mm. Actually, You know, we get almost half of our business comes from referrals and the exponentiality at some point, we're almost in that breakout point of referrers because people usually send us at least three people. So you got to think if a person becomes 
three people, those three people become nine, the nine, it, it grows very quickly. So yes, really exponential at, growth, but they love it because one, we help them. They know their friends going to get treated like they got treated and they're going to make a hundred dollars for every person that they send us. So it's a, you know, we, it's a, it's about 10%. It's a win, win, win. Oh, it's, it's a win, win, win. Everybody's winning. And the cool part is, you know, that you're going to put your friend into good hands, into a situation where they have no risk. They should have no fear of failure because if we can't do what we say we're going to, we can do, we're going to give their money back. Now it's interesting to note, we've never had to give a refund for not being able to give somebody, get somebody rated. Not ever one time. That's, that's something not once we that's offer something. it, but we've never had to honor it. Because we, you know, sometimes on the first pass, they won't get, a, they won't get approved, but that's why they have us. So we can go back to bat for them. And like, we had a guy try to quit. He actually called us crying. He's like, I knew I wasn't going to get rated. I should never try to do this. It's just another failure in my life. And I talked to him personally and I said, Stephen, this is why you would have us so that you don't have to do this alone. Let us take another swing. And he got to a hundred percent in 32 days on his second try. If he didn't have us, he would have just quit. So yeah. I think that's one of the biggest values we bring. We're in the trench with these veterans to see them through every step of their process. Yeah. When I was reading, it, it was sad. It's not like you're the only game in town, but you're like the only honest game in town. Yes. Yeah. You've got companies out there doing this for exorbitant rates, oh. charging these vets way too much. Yeah. You got other companies that are doing it for free, but they take so long, they're not getting anything done. Correct. So to have a company that is being led by a vet herself, she understands, you know what they're going through. And it doesn't matter if you're a vet, if you're homeless, you're homeless. Yeah. But to be a vet and be homeless, that's dishonorable. I mean, there's just no excuse for a country not taking care of their vets. They should be up there at the top. You know, I, I'm a vet. And it's not like I feel I'm being cheated or anything, but now I have compassion for vets. I understand what they're going through. And at any moment, their life could end. Their life is on the line. That's what they're there for, to protect us. And if we can't give them what they are justly deserving, it's enough to get you angry. Oh, yeah, because I deal with it every day. I hear from veterans <laughs> every day about how angry they are. I mean, you got to think... You know, last year, 161,000 migrants were seen in VA hospitals before veterans. Um, the VA HUD bash program that's supposed to house veterans was completely reallocated to migrants. That's why veteran homelessness went up. They say 7%, but watch this crazy figure. It was going down by 10%. So if it went up 7%, it actually went up 17%. That's crazy because we reallocated all of those funds to migrants. We're just our flat, not taking care of our veterans. I mean, I yeah. got hundreds of calls about it. Yeah. I mean, migrants are people too. We got nothing yeah. against taking care of people, but when yeah. you got to do triage, you take the most important up there at the top and taking care of our own should be first. And right. it's very intolerable to see American dollars going for foreigners first. I got no problem taking care of people, but let's not forget our own. Yeah, correct. I'm a compassionate person, but you know, my compassion first, as you said, is for the veteran community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I noticed that you're also uh, helping charities that are involved with the VA. You have been helping support a lot of different charities here just recently. I was reading some news about that. Yeah, so we we do work with our own charity, House the Heroes, but we also support Vance. Um, it's up in Oceanside. Lori Booty is the executive director. They do amazing work. This is actually what you have up on the screen is actually me giving this one of these classes at Vance. And they do it just amazing work locally. So we support them because they're in our backyard. You know, recently we just donated a bunch of all weather sleeping bags because she personally found 75 veterans sleeping on the street right around in the neighborhood. So we wanted to make sure that even though we couldn't get them all inside, that they were not freezing. Um, we also support, you know, the San Diego rescue mission. We try to pair them up with, you know, with Lori Booty at Vance. We also support the national center for healthy veterans. General Bob D is a, a big fan of him. He's a big fan of us and they have a PTSD ranch in Virginia uh, I took my whole team there this last year to go show them what we do, the kind of community that we are. But yeah, we certainly want to, you know, some of the funds that come into VetCom, 
need to go back out to the veteran community. So we like to be very mindful of choosing charities that we know use all the funds for the veterans. It's very important to us. Yeah, I was reading there is an organization out there that is supposedly helping vets who are homeless get into homes. And the VA gives the money to this third party, which is supposed to then give it to the vet, but they give only a fraction of that money. Yeah. And this is this is really the heartache here. Everything that we are doing to help vets, there's always somebody, a middleman, taking most of that money and it's not getting where it needs to be. Yeah. What good is a program if it isn't got end results that are what you're looking for? Yeah. And your company seems to be, well, you're in the public eye now. You're not a private company. Yeah. You're a public company doing yeah. this. And I think when people hear about what you're doing, I think it's going to make a difference in how they look at your company compared to every other company. As I said, it's one thing to be doing good business. It's another thing to be doing good with your business. Yeah, That's what I see your company is doing. Thank now, you. your company doesn't just help uh, with services. You actually have a few products with your company as well, right? Um, I mean, products like the thing that we actually sell now is our service. I mean, that that's what we sell. There are some products like tangible goods that we have in the hopper that I can't talk about yet that, that we will start to, you know, bring in as products because we actually, and not a lot of people know this, but we have actually 4 million veterans in our pipeline. 4 million. And you got to think at 997, if we were to reach them all, that's $4 billion pipeline. So a lot of people approach us, of course, because we have so much data on veterans and we're just not one of those com companies that's going to share our data with other uh, companies, but it's not to say we're not going to partner with them right in joint ventures right. and, and begin to scale with them and share their products to, you know, our uh, veterans. So what about the, uh, coffee from Psyche, the uh, mushroom coffee, did the company still carry that product? Um, they do still carry the product. Um, we haven't done as much with it recently because we're looking at the possibility of uh, changing what we do in the mushroom space. Oh. Um, you know, I can't talk about all of that yet, but we're certainly looking at other avenues that are that are on the other side of the, you know, the mushroom uh, world. And so I think that will be a much more juicier story. And I think it's something that veterans are going to care more about because it's something that they're going to be able to utilize for their mental health. So I think certainly we have some mushroom things uh, coming, but we're not working um, the coffee as much right now because we're retooling the way that we are going to sure. uh, approach mushrooms. <laughs> right. That's what they were doing before VetCom came around, right? Yeah. Right. And just so everybody knows, we're just talking about functional mushrooms, not yes. magic mushrooms. Yes, we're not, not spiking your coffee with any colors. <laughs> to help you with your anxiety and your uh, stress levels. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of new things coming out here soon that we can be looking forward to. Do you have any, now I did read back in November, I think it was, the company had no plans of a reverse stock split. Still holding to that? Still holding to that. Um, we don't plan. We have no um, dilution, um, you know, on the horizon. We have never spoken about it. You know, we want to retain um, the company's value for our shareholders. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that is our plan as of right now. Now, you've had some recent changes here in your management. I think you've added two new people in the last few months. Yeah. Uh, can, can you tell us about them? Yeah. I mean, there's, I, so I'm the CEO of the company. Everybody knows that. We have yeah. Jim, who is our CTO, Rick Kowarecki, who is our um, COO. He's like in charge of all of our operations. We have Michael Nichols, that, that you know, also he's the director at F45 franchise. He was also a VA Raider actually worked at the VA for 12 years on oh, that's the good. Side of this process. So he's, you know, been a good resource for us. He helped us get the skill bridge program, but we also brought on, and this is one of the most exciting new hires is Ernie Manansala. So Ernie Manansala is one of the premier um, C CMOs, chief marketing officers in the world. Most of the new products you, sh you see on shelves Ernie's the one, he and his team are the ones marketing those. So the fact that we even got 
Ernie and his team is is incredible. And they haven't even actually started. They're they're actually working up the wireframe for the app. They're pulling together all of the ads right now. And just so you, just so that everyone knows, we've never advertised Vetcom. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I know you do a lot of news, but did you ever have any advertisements? For about two weeks, we did a couple of little Facebook testing ads two years ago, but it was like something that we didn't put a lot of weight behind, but we are about to start spending quite a lot of time and ad dollars to go and actually get the public, you know, veterans that we don't already have in our database to come and participate with us. I think that um, the app, the, the, the selling of the do it yourself product, I think it, that will just blow up huge. And I also think it will give um, a ton of leads to my sales team that we have uh, that we have here. So just any advertising should shoot us vertical pretty fast. Yeah, between an app, which is, you know, do it yourself, between your referrals, which is really strong. Not right. only is it an incentive for a person to make a hundred bucks, but the better incentive is that you're helping yeah. probably somebody you know, somebody you care about, change their life. Yeah. That is excellent. The company has got lots of things that they're doing for the veterans. And I think that's what's going to make this company stand apart from every other company is that you're helping the people we know, the people yeah. we love. It's not just about money. Yeah. Now, when you were talking about that uh, skill bridge program, yeah. I was very interested in that. I did do some deeper dive into that because I was in the military. When I got out, finding a job immediately was difficult. Yeah. And I ran into some hard times after I got out, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah. Um, the skill bridge program is helping vets that are discharged to transition into a job that the military is going to actually cover the, uh, revenues for, for six months. And they could actually work for your company, helping other vets get their benefits. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't get any better than that. I mean, it's an easy yeah. transition. They're helping their fellow vets. The vets themselves are getting helped. I mean, God, it's just a perfect, perfect picture for a transition for somebody coming out yeah. of the military. Well, and they're also getting into a situation where a lot of military people work here. So they're getting to keep that cohesion. You know, they're getting to have the camaraderie. They're getting employed by someone who understands, you know, their vernacular and, and their needs. And right. I just think it's a good soft landing for veterans to go through our skill bridge program. So you all show up at work at 0800. We do work a lot. You know, I, I've been working on this company seven days a week for the last three years. You know, I, in addition to being on the news and running for Congress, I'm a, I'm a mom of a six-year-old little boy. Um, but I work this company very hard. You know, obviously somebody's driving this, you know, productivity and um, I have a really good C-level team. We work hard, really hard. I was reading um, something earlier, and I just wanted to ask you personally. I read something that said that you were an angry mother of a six-year-old uh, because the child was uh, being uh, changed in school, indoctrinated, you said. Yeah. Could you explain that to me so I understand why you were an angry mother? Well, um, I'm not an angry mother. I was angry at the time because my little son came home when he was five from kindergarten and got told he could be a girl or marry a little boy. Ah, uh, um, I don't like that. <laughs> that no, I agree. I you know, agree. You got to wait for a child to get to the age of reasoning before you confuse them. It's, yeah, it's, too, it's too little. Like, why are we telling little kids this? That's what made me, that's what made me angry. You know, I don't, as a Marine, as a Marine Corps, like mama bear kind of person, I don't like that kind of stuff. And I'm not going to pretend like I do. So someone right. else's feelings don't get hurt. I don't like it. <laughs> now you said you're running for Congress for the 49th district of California. Can you tell me what your platforms are planning on being? Because I don't like to vote for hardly anybody that runs for office because I don't like most of them. I don't like what they stand for. I don't like they're what they likeable. do. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not likeable. I met them. They're horrible. <laughs> I mean, I voted for the president I voted for simply because I didn't want to vote for the other one. Yeah. I mean, that's not the way to vote. Yeah. 
No. You right now are like one of the only people I would feel honored to put in office. Somebody who's thinking about the Americans that have already paid their price. It's time for us to pay them. So that that to me is a big, big deal. So can you give us some more information for why you want to run and what you plan on doing when you get there? And do you have plans to be president? Well, <laughs> you never know. CEO of the country, right? Um, Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I would like even prefer that title, I think. He's the CEO of the country. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, I think the why the running, um, I think it all started with all this all the stuff with veterans. You know, I started to craft the framework of the Veteran Entrepreneur Act, which would allow veterans to use their GI Bill to start a business. Being an entrepreneur is a big part of who I am. And I like to help people with their entrepreneurship because college isn't everyone's answer to life. Not everyone is suited to go to college, but they should still be able to use their benefit for something. And to start a business gives them productivity, productivity purpose. It allows them to employ other people, which I love being an employer. I love to change people's lives. So I started to work on the framework of that legislation. And I went back and forth to DC many times, getting bipartisan um, buy-in for it. And I just went, this is something I have a, a knack for. And since I'm working on things for veterans, why not do it at the federal level, not at the state level? It's a federal issue. It is. Yeah. So that. So then I once I started to get into the homeless crisis in the veteran community, then then I figured out, well, homelessness is a federal issue. It's everywhere. It's in every state. Then, you know, people started to bring me stuff that's going on with migrants, you know, circumventing veterans. So then I started to look into the border. Well, the border is a federal issue. Right. So all these issues kept coming up and, and they're federal issues. Right. And so the last thing, though, was my little son, like I just told you, coming back and telling me about what he had heard at school. And I think that was the final thing. Scoop all that together. And I just went, I've served my country before. I'm a solution provider. I have a lot of really good solutions and I'm a leader. I have no problem telling people what to do and when to do it. <laughs> and they need leadership in Congress. They're just over there milling around doing God knows what, uh, not getting stuff done for the American people. They're too busy worried about lining their own pockets to do a damn thing for you or I or any other person, certainly veterans. And I just said enough is enough. You know, and my slogan is demand better. Well, that would started with me. Demand better of me. And then right. I can demand better of other people. So that's what really made me decide to run. You know, I'm running uh, on veterans first. You know, that's a big platform for me. That's something that I... Be. It's yeah. been a problem for decades in this country. Yeah. It's been talked about and neglected. And I'm really sick of it. And I'm not even talking about me. I'm talking about every American that's ever served. It is yeah. sickening to see the country turn their backs on the vets that were protecting them in the first place. So yeah. we need somebody like you in there to get change taken care of. We're done talking. Yeah. We need to get our vets taken care of now. Well, I, I've actually been saying, and it makes people laugh, but I said, we don't need nice. We need 911. Our country is burning. Like this nicety, this diplomacy, we don't need that. Voters don't want that. They want someone that's going to say it like it is and go there and shove a square peg through a round hole. And I will do that because I, seriously, <laughs> I have no problem when people, you've seen me on interviews, probably they ask me a question. I will tell you exactly what the truth is, whether you like it or not. You know, because I've been done enough research to know the ugly truth of what's really going on. Well, I think people are in the mood now for hard truth. We're yeah. done being pandered to. We're done being lied to. Don't give us your soft stories of how you think you're going to do something. Do it. And right. honestly, the military, the vets, they have been neglected for a very, very long time. We depend on them so much. Yeah. And then after they do their job, we forget about them. So I'm happy to hear that we have you, not only a woman, but an ex, ex Marine. Honestly, I think a woman would do a better job. Men have had the ball for a long time. And where have we gotten with it? I don't want to get into that conversation. I just think it's fair. I think it's due that we start getting women in government who have different faculty capacities to put to use rather than all this masculinity testosterone that we're throwing around. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I'm, 
I'm one of those women. I'm not just for like any woman just because it's a woman, but I think there's a lot of amazing, you know, women leaders, um, yes, certainly people, you know, good business leaders, people that have served in the military. You know, I have kind of a unique background as a woman having, you know, owned a lot of businesses also been in military intelligence. I just have a kind of a uniqueness to my story. And I really think that's going to resonate with voters. And I think that's going to get some SHIT done in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I I had to catch up with you right there for a minute. What what organization is that? S H I T. Oh, that's not an organization. <laughs> no, that's getting things organized. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> yes, it is. So we've tagged on to a lot of things here that I'm aware of. Is there anything you can share with us, Kate, that I'm not aware of that you would like the investors to know about your company? Yeah. Or yourself. I, yeah, I think there's some interesting the things that investors need to understand uh, about the company. Um, okay. Now that we have 35 people on the team, we can overnight when we flip on this new marketing, we could go from the amount of claims we do now, we could go and scale to do a million dollars worth of new claims a month. So we have, we employ enough people right now to go vertical to a million dollars in sales and be able to handle all the claims. Right. So Absolutely posturing all that infrastructure so that we could go vertical very quickly. And we feel like rolling into the next quarter, that's a totally possible number. So we really feel like we could get to a million in revs by our next quarter. That's incredible for a little- I don't bit. doubt that. I mean, yeah. with your app coming out, your referral program, that's even with new, on yeah. the news, you start getting, as you said, that experience exponential growth, people yeah. telling people, telling people, yeah. because it's not a hot movie. It's not a new restaurant. It's changing somebody's life. There's nothing more important than that. So I think once you get your locomotive going, yeah. it's going to end up being a bullet train. Yeah. I mean, we're already picking up speed, like, ma like massively picking up speed. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is our four million veterans that we have in our in our pipeline it's going to take us a long time to even try to convert them but right now just so you know as shareholders we let just text people and they text us back and we have a review with them when they buy that's how easy it is and this is something i want everybody to understand we're not selling people crap they don't need we're not selling them the promise of maybe you can make money someday buy this and it's the end all be all no we're literally saying give me 997 and i'm going to guarantee you get more than 997 a month forever no yeah. one is selling money we're literally selling money to people like the thing that we sell is in like it's incredible mm. people like don't get how exciting this is like i'll take two <laughs> right like you could go bang on the door of a million civilians and they would go find that, that thousand bucks right now. Right. If we could sell this to the whole world, uh, like imagine, uh, you know, the endless possibilities that we would have, but we're selling right. money. So that's something to keep in mind. <laughs> Never thought of it that way, but you are for are. I mean, that's less than a thousand dollars. You're looking at one to $3,000 revenue for the next rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, this is something to also keep in mind. Here in San Diego alone, we've partnered with some uh, mortgage companies and some real estate companies. We have created 68 new homeowners just this last year because they now have enough money to own a home. They're creating generational wealth for their families. We've got so many people to 100. We did the math. 800 kids just this year in San Diego now get to go to college for free because we got their parents to 100%. Like wow. huge, the the ripple effect, the butterfly yes. effect of what happens because of the stuff we do. Like these little old people came, saw me on the news. They had worked with another organization for four years. Floyd, he's like our mascot baby. We love him. But he's 85 years old. And he called me and he said, tomorrow, my intent to file expires again. I need help. I go, well, you better get in the car. He drives here to see me. I make his claim for him. I find the, you know, he was in a typhoon. I find a Google doc about it, upload it into the system. He goes from 10%. So he's getting 150 bucks. He immediately goes to 40% in 90 days. Then we make another claim and now he's 80% in six months. So he was only getting $150. Now he's getting $2,000. He came and told my staff, I was putting groceries away six months ago, and we just put a new roof on our house because of you guys. 
You guys have changed our lives. We get to go out to eat now. This basic, simple stuff that we don't think about every day as a shareholder in this company, you might not have to put eggs back. You might not have to decide if you get the cheap bread or the cheap whatever, or the cheap cheese. You might not be making those decisions, but millions of veterans are, and we are radically changing their lives, like generationally. It's like, it's. It, I feel privileged to do this, and you should understand that this company is not just a company. We are radically changing the future of America and their kids. It's it's incredible what we do. And when the world figures this out, it's going to be something. Well, as you just said, that opened up my eyes that the children are receiving benefits from their vet uh, uh, relationship, being yeah. able to go to school. Yeah. That, that just goes on further and further and further. Yes. I can't, you know, whenever I look at a company, I'm always looking for the short string. I'm looking for something that's not exactly what it should be. I can't see that in your company. Everything I look at stirs me up and makes me feel warm inside. We're helping the people that need the help. Some of these people feel abandoned. Some feel lonely. And this is horrible for anybody to feel, especially a vet who has served his country. The last thing he should ever feel is abandoned. God, I'm feeling it right now. It's a hard thing. So I'm glad to have you guys doing what you're doing. Now, you were talking about those two companies. Uh, what was that? It was Scott Evans of Cross Country Mortgages and Jim Bottrell's Watson Realty, Desert, Desert Properties. But you're also creating some sort of uh, quick place for homeless people to go before they get their home so they're not just living in the streets waiting for their money to come in. Yeah, so we are working on trying to get some grant money potentially to build like a little mini base camp here in San Diego. That's what we'd like to do during this next year and prove concept with these base camps where that would be, you know, a cafeteria, chapel, rehab, shower system, real hooches with real bunks um, to get them from, you know, camping, which they're not really camping. They're sleeping on the street <laughs> into a right. situation where they're infrastructure camping, where they're used to because they're veterans. They've been in this situation before and then yeah. figure out why they're homeless and get them into their next stop and it, kind of a sorting rehabilitation center. Um, cause you're not going to, nothing good is going to happen for you while you're sleeping outside. No. You, you're not safe sleeping outside physically or mentally. So we got to get these guys uh, inside. And that's one of our big goals. I can appreciate that. Um, as I said, when I came out of the military, I, I had some situations and I was homeless immediately. As soon as I came out, I was homeless for nine months and that it's a horror. No matter what your life situation is, veteran, getting out of school, uh, being kicked out of your home. It doesn't matter. Being homeless is being homeless, but being a vet, you should have somewhere to turn somebody who cares, somebody who can help because that isn't right. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. Like I said, there's been lots of people through the years talking up a storm about how they're going to do something. We should do something, but nobody is doing anything. So I get excited when I hear you talk about your ideas. And I would love to see you get into Congress because I think we need somebody to start making laws that help the people and not just the country we need to help the people because the people are the backbone of the country and the military, our vets, they're the ones that deserve the most honor of all of us. I think our vets deserve it. So I am honored to be talking to you today, Kate, and I am hoping great success for you to get into Congress and do whatever it is you plan on doing for the Americans. Thank you very much. Anything else we might need to cover before we say goodbye? Uh, no, I mean, I would just challenge all of our shareholders and potential shareholders with this. Just because we're a penny stock company doesn't mean we have to have penny stock ideology and limit ourselves to the penny stock BS that everyone else does. It's okay that we do good stuff. It's okay that we help veterans. It's okay that we help homeless people. It's okay that we're good people doing good things. We don't have to be this trash you're used to. You can get excited about doing good stuff. It's okay because we're about to uplist. And this girl right here, she's a bell ringer. And I will tell you right now, I will shove this company up to the top of a mountain and I will write it down with all of you until we ring that freaking bell at NASDAQ. I will not freaking stop until we do that because it's a goal of mine. It's a goal of this company. We won't stop. So just because we're some little pitly shit penny stock company now doesn't mean we're staying here. We're, <laughs> we're climbing out of the mire 
up to where we belong. So you this is where them. this is where a lot of great companies started yes. right down here, and they had to yeah. work hard to get up yeah. there, proving themselves. Yeah, we're in the come up cycle right now. It's 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 time. Come up. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, the I, I think people are going to be excited about this next quarter, you know, financials. Hopefully I gave you a better picture of the actual numbers that, you know, mm -hmm. versus what we have to report as a pubco. But we're we're doing big things. We have big revs. I mean, I think by the middle of summer, we should be pasting NASDAQ revs. And that's exciting. I mean, we do more we do more revenue and have more employees and on the press more than some huge companies. I don't know another CEO on the on TV as much as I am. Go find no, I got to tell you, when I was doing research on you and I pulled up images, that's pretty much what 80% of them were, was you on some news broadcast show. And I mean, there was page after page. It was like you had more information about you than any other CEO I have looked at in the two years I've been doing these videos. Yeah, I'm, so, not hiding. <laughs> I'm not hiding in a tower somewhere. I'm, I'm at work. I'm out working for us shareholders. I'm out working for veterans, because if I sit here silent in my office, who's going to know we exist? I mean, like Newsweek. I don't know if you saw the Newsweek article. No. This, this last week, we got a whole thing in Newsweek about us. They've talked about us being a publicly traded company, about us working on veteran homelessness in Newsweek. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Not just, you know, everybody's worried that Kate's only on the Republican news. In news, <laughs> we were in Newsweek. That is such a big deal. It is. A huge yeah, local news is one thing. Newsweek, yeah. you're, you're at the top of the mountain there. Everybody knows Newsweek. Yeah, and I've been on, you know, Fox News National on every, I've even been on Jesse Waters, the biggest one. You know, I've been on a lot of really big news. And I think this week we put a press release out. It got syndicated 153 times. Like that is great to a hear. A lot of really big things. I mean, we were on multiple radio shows this week, multiple, you know, in studio news this week, Newsweek. I mean, we're, it's about to, it's about to catch. It's like, you know, a car, a nice car is up on blocks, like a Ferrari and it's just spinning. And I just feel like we're about to go to just get that <laughs> on and take off. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, and you guys should be excited too. Cause a lot of really, really big stuff coming. You mentioned uplisting. You have any idea when that may occur? And are you thinking of just going to the QB or do you want to go all the way up to the major exchange? Um, I don't know that we can make the major exchange leap all in one leap. You know, it's probably right. going to be a, you know, we're going to have to take that mid step, which I think is fine because it's a good story, right? It's a good story to go, you know, one to the other, but, sure. uh, but not and when you get to the QB, you start giving us more information, your yeah. financials are audited. I mean, you get in a better place. So yeah, as long as you're progressing, things are going the way they're supposed to go. We can't expect overnight success, yeah. but you can expect growth on a regular basis. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you this. I mean, I can tell you this much. We, you know, we went through most of the audit last year. We've been, we've been doing our books as though we're going to go through an audit. Right. So we're, we're within not very long away from being fully audited so that we can do just that. So we, we have plans to be moving very quickly toward that, like very quickly. Fantastic. Yes. Thank well, you. I can't think of any other questions on my mind right now, but I'm sure as soon as we're done with this, I will. <laughs> yes. And I'm sure you're going to end up getting, you know, more questions. And if you ever get questions from this that you want to reach out to me, I don't mind answering them in a video and sending them back to you so you can send it out to anybody that had any questions outlying from our talk today. Be glad to do that for you. That is why I'm here to pass information on to the investors. However I get it, however it comes to me, whatever format it's in, I like to be creative. So by all means, send me whatever you got. And I've noticed just before this interview, these last couple of days, I think uh, three out of every five tweets uh, for me have been about this interview. There's been a lot of interest. A lot of people definitely like what your company is doing. And I think a lot of people like you, Kate. Well, thank you very much. It's actually funny that you mentioned that because I actually had to make a video a few months ago because I was starting to get like the little haters coming out at me. And I told everybody, if you have any clap back for me, <laughs> just send me a message because if you come after me in a public area, I will nuke you. You will not be a follower <laughs> anymore. Don't because, mess with this Marine. No, but they don't. just need to understand I'm a business owner. I'm a very busy lady. I do not have time yeah, yeah. for any of your whiny freaking nonsense. 
if you want to act like an adult and talk to me, I want to talk to you. Clearly, I'm a very transparent person. I want to have a conversation with you. And um, I would just ask that everyone have some modicum of respect, the same kind of respect that I have for you as shareholders, because, yeah, people are being you know, kind of nasty. Now, the good news is I have a lot of people that like me, so they jump to my defense. But people are even picking apart the fact that I wear red lipstick. I'm like, you need to grow up. You're, you're- yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't please everybody. No, you just I'm can't. not pizza and ice cream, right? I can't please everyone. <laughs> and I'm not, and you're not, and I'm not trying to please everyone. Yeah. We're just being ourselves. And as you said, I'm being sincere. I'm being honest. Even if I'm being blatant, you know where I stand. Correct. And that's what matters, especially when you're talking about business. Yeah. You don't want any games. You don't want any shadows. You would rather have the hard truth and know the facts so you can deal with them. Again, I appreciate what you're doing. I think you're going to make a great CEO. I think you would be even a better congressperson. I would like to see, you see how I said that, congressperson? Uh-huh. <laughs> I would like to see you in there. I think America needs somebody like you, Kate, in there, somebody that's going to be pushing for laws that make a difference to the people uh-huh. and not just to the tax base and to the businesses. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate your time today and hopefully all the shareholders and, you know, prospective shareholders got something good out of our time. But like I said, anything you need from me, I'm always here. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, folks, for sharing your time with us. We are happy to give you as much information as we can. But of course, we didn't do it all. So do your own due diligence. Follow it behind this video, studying up on CEOS and Kate Monroe. She's got a lot videos out there. You want a new series? Forget Netflix. Just go to Google and look up Kate. She's got lots of them. Out Hours. There. <laughs> Hours. Days. Yes. Binge worthy. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you, Kate. We look forward to talking to you again. I hope to have you here. Folks, we look forward to talking to you again too. We'll see you again later. Bye-bye.